This is a tutorial on creating polynomial models. If we were given a graph of a polynomial function that looks something like this, could we use this graph to determine our equation or the function of our polynomial? Well, we can, and the way to do that is to first recognize some easy to spot points on the graph. There are several. The first ones we're going to look at are our x intercepts. Here we have an x-intercept of negative 2, 0. Here we have an x-intercept of 1, 0. And then here we have an x-intercept of 4, 0. Now there's one more point that we can find. Here we have a y-intercept of 0, 2. So how do we use these points to write our model? Well, when we find our x-intercepts, that's just like finding our solutions or our zeros to our polynomial function. Here we have a zero of x is equal to negative 2. We have another zero as x is equal to 1. And then we have another zero of x is equal to 4. Now we get those zeros from our factors x plus 2 because if we set that equal to 0, we would find out that x is equal to negative 2. We'd also have a factor of x minus 1, because that would give us a 0 when x is equal to 1. And then our last one is x minus 4, because if x was 4, that would give us a 0 from this factor x minus 4. So here we almost have our polynomial function be equal to x plus 2, x minus 1 and then times x minus 4. Except we're not quite done here. We have to make sure that this y-intercept fits our function. So to do that we'll plug in 0 for x and 2 for f of x. So that'll look like 2 is equal to 0 plus 2 times 0 minus 1 times 0 minus 4. Well, this is 2, this is a negative 1, and this is a negative 4. If I multiply that out, I'll get 2 times negative 1 is a negative 2, and then times negative 4 would be a positive 8. So here we have 2 is equal to 8. But that doesn't make any sense. So instead of what we do is we put a multiple out front. We'll call it a. And we need to solve for a. So again, we'll go back and we'll plug in 0 and 2 are y-intercept, and we'll get a function that looks like 2 is equal to a times 0 plus 2 times 0 minus 1 times 0 minus 4. Here we have 2 is equal to a times 2 times negative 1 times negative 4. Or we get 2 is equal to a times 8. If I divide both sides by 8, I'm going to get a is equal to 1 fourth. So if we go back and plug that in for a, we'll get our function is equal to 1 fourth times x plus 2 times x minus 1 times x minus 4. x times x is an x squared. x times a minus 1 is a minus x. 2 times x is a positive 2x, and then 2 times a minus 1 is a negative 2. If I add my like terms, I'll get an x squared plus x minus 2. This is still multiplied by a 1 fourth and an x minus 4. So now I'm going to multiply the x minus 4 in. x squared times x is x cubed. x squared times minus 4 is a minus 4x squared. x times x is a positive x squared x times a minus 4 is a minus 4x, minus 2 times x is a minus 2x, and then minus 2 times minus 4 is a positive 8. So if I combine my like terms again, I'll have an x cubed minus 3x squared minus 6x plus 8. Now don't forget about this 1 fourth. If we distribute that in, We'll get our function is equal to a 1 fourth x cubed minus 3 fourths x squared 
minus 3 halves x plus 2. So this is our polynomial function in standard form that represents this graph. Well, let's say we weren't given a graph. What if we were just given several values of our function for different x values? Well, notice that our x values here increase by 1. We have a 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Because they increase by 1, we can use the method of finite differences. In finite differences, you just try to find a pattern in the way that your function values increase. So for example, between 1 and 5 in our function values, this is an increase of 4. Between 5 and 14, this is an increase of 9. Between 14 and 29, that's an increase of 15. And between 29 and 51, that's an increase of 22. Well, we keep going. Between 4 and 9 is an increase of 5. Between 9 and 15 is an increase of 6. And between 15 and 22 is an increase of 7. Over close, between 5 and 6 is an increase of 1. And between 6 and 7 is an increase of 1. This is what we were looking for. We're looking for a spot where our difference between these numbers stays the same. Here we have a 1 and then an increase of 1 again. It doesn't have to be 1, but these have to be the same number. And since we have the same number, we have to look and see what order this is. This first set of numbers, or first set of differences between our function values, is called our first order difference. This second row of numbers is our second order of differences. And then this is our third order of differences. Now because our third order of differences is constant, or is the same every time we have a new number, we will always increase by one, that means that these function values are represented by a third order polynomial. So if we know we have a third order polynomial, we can write it in standard form like ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d is equal to our function. Or our function is this polynomial in standard form. But we don't know our coefficients so what we did is we replaced our coefficients with variables, a, b, c, and d. Now, to find our coefficients, or to solve for these variables, we're going to need four equations, because we have four unknowns, a, b, c, and d. And to find our equations, we're going to plug in our x and our f of x values. So if we plug in x for 1, our first equation would be a times 1 cubed, plus b times 1 squared, plus c times 1, plus d, and that's got to be equal to our function value of 1. So our first equation then would be a plus b plus c plus d is equal to 1. Because 1 cubed is 1, and 1 squared is 1, and 1 times anything is just that number, so we have an a plus b plus c plus d is equal to 1. Well, we need four equations because we have four unknowns, and this is just one equation. So we'll plug in at x equaling 2, and our f of x is equal to 5, and find our next equation. So if we do that, we'll get a times 2 cubed, plus b times 2 squared, plus c times 2, plus d, is equal to 5. Again, I just plugged in 2 for x, and 5 for our function value, f of x. We simplify this, 2 cubed is 8, so we have an 8a, 2 squared is 4, so we have b times 4, 2 is just 2, so c times 2 plus d is equal to 5. So our second equation then is 8a plus 4b plus 2c plus d is equal to 5. Well that's our second equation, we still need two more, so next we're going to plug in 3 for x and 14 for our function value, or f of x. And if we do that, we'll have a times 3 cubed plus b times 3 squared plus c times 3 plus d is equal to 14. Simplify this. 3 cubed is 27. So we have a times 27 
3 squared is 9, so b times 9, plus c times 3, plus d, is equal to 14. So our equation then is 27a plus 9b plus 3c plus d is equal to 14. Well, we need one more equation, so we're going to plug in 4 for x and 29 for our function value, or f of x. If we do that, we'll get a times 4 cubed plus b times 4 squared plus c times 4 plus d is equal to 29. Again, we'll simplify. 4 cubed is 64, so 64 times a. 4 squared is 16, so b times 16, plus c times 4, plus d is equal to 29. So our fourth equation then is 64a plus 16b plus 4c plus d is equal to 29. Well, now that we have our four equations, we can solve this using substitution or elimination or any method you prefer. This will become very difficult to do by elimination or substitution because it will have many, many steps. So if you can, it's probably easiest to put this into a graphing calculator or some other multiple equation solver. If you plug this into a graphing calculator, you can use matrix or two matrices. The first matrix will just contain all of your coefficients. So it'll be 1, 1, 1, and 1 for our first equation because we have a 1a, 1b, 1c and 1d. Then we would have an 8, 4, 2, and 1, a 27, 9, 3, and 1, and then a 64, 16, 4, and 1. That's our first matrix. The next one will be just our function values, 1, 5, 14, and 29. If we call this first matrix A and this second matrix B, then what we do is you would multiply B times the inverse of A, and that would give you a matrix with your solutions for A, B, C, and D. If you do that, you'll find out that A is equal to 1 sixth, B is equal to 3 halves, C is equal to a negative 5 thirds, and D is equal to 1. So knowing that we can write our polynomial function as f of x is equal to a 1 sixth x cubed plus 3 halves x squared minus 5 thirds x plus 1. And that completes the tutorial on creating polynomial models.